That is the official clock of the lab. Go to colors that are not good because I don't. I cannot choose them, so it's better to be flashy. Okay. So uh, our invited speaker today is uh, Ricardo Gavotti. Uh, he's an Italian physicist. Uh, Ricardo he did his uh, PhD in uh, the University of Bologna. He was advised by uh, Armando Bazzani and uh, Sofro Rambaldi. And during his PhD, uh, in his PhD work, he studied uh, human mobility uh, from new sources of data, namely GPS data, uh, especially in the context of cities. After that, he went to Paris to do a postdoc with uh, Mark Barthelemy and uh, also Mason Porter, I guess, in Oxford. Uh, collaborated with him. Collaborated. And uh, during your postdoc, uh, during your postdoc, you focused on the, um, still human mobility in cities, but this time with an approach upon the uh, structure of uh, spatial structure of uh, transport networks, and notably how they are too complicated for our brains, right? And today he's going to talk about uh, human mobility and explain us why, in fact, human mobility is not a work. So this is a Can I close the door? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I can see also this, this side of the room. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me for this doing this seminar. It's the first time I do this uh, um, this talk. Uh, I presented something that was a preliminary result in uh, a workshop uh, organized by Jose, but actually that what I presented was wrong because I <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I'm working on this subject since my PhD thesis, and I'm basically falsifying it. Uh, but in 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 the uh, in the in all this, I'm taking down also uh, like uh, the, the the first sentence that in many papers that I wrote and other people wrote uh, in on human mobility, we put a reference saying human mobility is a levy flight or even a levy walk. This comes uh, from the fact that physicists started working on human mobility, and started using models that we already handled to explain something that was uh, uh, different. We have a, a baggage of all models, and we try to sell them. <laughs> that is what we do for a living. And um, uh, there are many questions on human mobility where physicists started working. One is, uh, where do people go? So uh, where do you, would you go to work, or where you, do you uh, transfer if you want to find a job? And, uh, or you can focus on, uh, on the individual mobility so of only one person and try to understand the difference between places or the difference between person can have different habits. Our, since we are physicists, we would like to make predictions. And what has been found that is kind of reasonable to predict the mobility of people because since you are here now, I can guess that with 65% probability that next week you'll be in this building at the same time. This is prediction. At, at no moment we are at this level. Let's go, let's go to this. But I worked on a very simple question that is just how far do we go? And like just only in one dimension, like only try to study the probability distribution 
of the distance covered between one stop and another from people. And this simple question already hasn't a real a clear answer because it's, uh, on different perspective, on different data set, someone say that uh, so that in cities you have a distribution that is exponential. In outside cities you have a distribution that is a power law. If you take a three parameter curve, you can fit whatever you want, basically. And uh, uh, many people try to fit the, uh, any, uh, the data set with this curve, but also this three, the, the parameters doesn't have a clear meaning. And uh, most, of, mo most of the time, we just fit this curve and just go on with our research on something else. And uh, this is a general problem that I want to uh, introduce, speaking about something uh, different before, because uh, having a power law distribution of displacement, like uh, what is seen here, or if you see, this is a truncated power law, because it's reasonable to say that in a finite space, you cannot have um, um, a power law distribution because at one point America will end and you cannot go further. And uh, this model has been uh, uh, first applied to animals. It has been, uh, uh, this is pretty cool because they also saw that if, you, uh, if an animal uh, do a random work that is not a brown animal work but is a levy fly, so they have a long tail of the displacement distribution, they can go visit places uh, that are far away, and this is with a 20 minus 2 optimal for looking for food in an environment that you don't know. So it's a good way of exploring, trying to look for food. And of course this, uh, this paper, this research, happened after that they saw that effectively uh, uh, animals were wandering, moving like a levy fly. This was a study on albatrosses. However, then, taking the same data set and now also other data set, they try to make better uh, statistic analysis and they say, hey, this is not really a power law, as you were saying. And uh, they made meta-analysis of different uh, sorts of, of, of movement, from boats uh, to uh, seals uh, to deers, and basically uh, you can say whatever you want. It depends on how you cut the data set, on how uh, where you focus. And the problem is that people were only relying on fit, and with the fit you could try to say, to support your thesis one way or the other. And uh, there are some papers, this, this, this group of people try to uh, go a bit further and try to understand uh, why um, it could uh, s s something that looked like a, a levy flight emerge from something that perhaps is not a levy flight. Like for studying the movement of this insect, they saw that Basically, every insect made tracks that were different one each other, and uh, the single uh, insect had uh, like an exponential distribution of travel times, but they were different. So if you made the integral, you had something that looks like a power law. And same group making a comment to a science paper that said that uh, uh, the muscles do a lady flight. I cannot imagine them moving at all, but <laughs> this is the data. <laughs> Basically, they say, no, this is not a really fight, but it's a composite random work. This, is, this paper is humiliating. If you want to, to have, if you have a schadenfreude, this is some, something that is one page destroys a science paper. Because basically, the, uh, the, in the original paper, they cut the data differently. They also made some like, poor mistake. And now, the, what they propose is say, this is not a power law. This is more like two exponentials. Okay, whatever. Like, the thing is, uh, you, you can see exponential, you can see power laws. The problem is that uh, uh, I work with the Maison Porter. He basically made, a, made, made his career saying that power laws most of the time are just, are just a bad fit. <laughs> and uh, the, the idea is that uh, UK, you can find a power law, but why? The, the power should be like a, uh, something that comes out of a mechanism. And you, uh, the mechanism should be something that help you understanding what is beyond the data you're serving, you're aggregating. So, who knows what it is? Uh, Everybody. Knows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the first answer to the question? And the second? Okay. One, having this image, can say that this is a hat, or that this is a bottom sweater that is digesting an elephant. This is recognizing the pattern. This totally looks like a hat. It's brown and has, yeah, has, has the shape of a hat. 
This is something that is not trivial, and you have to open it to understand that it's a bond constrictor uh, digesting an elephant. So, uh, the difference between pattern and mechanism it uh, means entering in the problem, opening it, and trying to understand what are the fundamental constituents of, the, of what you're studying. And uh, this, uh, uh, the same thing as another parallel, more close to what I do uh, normally, that is studying how people behave. And we have a pattern, uh, a pattern that has been found. In, uh, they study the distribution between times of communication. So how much time passed between the, you that send me an email and I, I answer you, or how much time between I that I answer the email and the following answer that I do? And they found a power law with an exponent minus one. And of course, they, uh, Barbasi developed a model that is consistent with the data. Also, this is what we do for a living, so it's not, it's not a shame. We always do some this. But uh, then one can also open up the problem and try to understand better what's happening. And uh, uh, another group that have also like a, a, a very interesting uh, debate on archive on the original paper found that the same data are, uh, can be explained with a Poissonian process. Actually, there are two Poissonian processes because they say you have a, um, a, a Poissonian process with a random frequency of deciding that you are answering um, an email. And then you have, when you start answering an email, you have a sort of uh, possibility of repeating the process for answering another email because I'm already at the computer with my, my software open. And, uh, but for understanding this, they had to study to open the Boas Valley. Like they had to understand what's happening with the, when people um, uh, communicate. And so they found that there were different um, frequencies depending on the day of the week, depending on the time of the day, and uh, different people also had different uh, uh, stream of mails answered uh, in, a, in a chain. And if you aggregate all this information, they could explain all the, all the individual communication using a um, Poisson <laughs> This is like the, the simplest uh, interval time model we can, uh, we can think. So we have this, uh, in the literature comes uh, this difference between pattern modeling and uh, identifying the mechanism. That also you can see like the difference between publishing in nature and understanding in uh, nature. <laughs> and uh, I bet that you, all of you, would easily go for the first. <laughs> but uh, back to my question. I have uh, this pattern. This is uh, one curve and uh, one feet. That also is a bit hard to understand because from this perspective, it just runs away from my hand. And luckily, I, I've been working with data that are extremely good. And uh, uh, I have the, the where people park the car in Italy. I have a large example of, of cars. I have a large uh, temporal interval. And they know the duration of the parking and the duration of the trip between one trip and another. And they have the positions. Basically, I know everything. And uh, the only problem is they have only one transportation mode. And uh, the other analysis are uh, sometimes on all people moving uh, and making four calls. But I will try to support all my results using other data set to show that most of the things are the same. This public parking, not parking in the street? I, no, it, I have the GPS of, uh, the, of the, uh, installed on people for insurance reasons. And the GPS records exactly when the car is turned off and on. And there's a resistor where. So I know where the, you turn on your car and where uh, you turn off the car. And when. Why do you do that? So, that? For insurance reasons, like uh, you, um, uh, if you want to have a discount of, uh, of insurance in Italy, you uh, sign with a company that installs a black box, and uh, so if you, uh, they steal your car, uh, they can find it. Okay. If you have an accident, there are a solometer, a cellometers inside, and can reconstruct the last man or moments of your of your uh, crap before you crash and show, see if you were right or not. And uh, this comes with a, uh, with a discount to insurance. Okay. And in um, Singapore, this is smart. So uh, in Singapore, they basically have the total information of how, where cars go, go, but they have a privacy law that is different from Italian, so they cannot use it. <laughs> <laughs> so the good news that uh, is uh, we have precise, precise information. Do you have also the, the intermediate points? Uh, we have some intermediate points. It's sample like every two kilometers. Well, you that's a lot. That's a lot of points. So you, so you really know the path that, that the people fall from one point to the other? Yes, indeed we will use also a bit of information of the path for understanding uh, the, how the speed will grow during the path. I will get to that. 
And uh, so, but, but we have precise time. And so I can make a, uh, an analysis that normally is uh, hard to do because if you have only where people call and only where people tweet, data like this, it's hard to like uh, study the duration of the strip. I have, uh, I can indeed uh, instead study the duration of the strips and separate citizens. I take uh, the citizen in one city of Rome and I study him also when he's not in Rome. I don't make cuts of the map. I only segregate by where the people uh, sleep in the night. And I see that the distribution is universal and uh, exponential. But of course, the, uh, the average depends on the city. There is a, uh, some sort of trend that the larger the city, the more they travel, but it's not very, very good. And uh, so distribution is exponential, and the average travel time across all, all individuals is of 30, uh, 0.30 hours, that is about 18 minutes. I will use this, uh, um, this value further on. This is also confirmed by in, in public transport data. If you take, there is a public data set of uh, um, origin destination in uh, the, the tube network in London, and the time between the region and the destination has discovered that it's for sure not a long tail. It's for sure it's something that is exponential -ish. Don't don't care about the red line, it's something that they put in, not, that doesn't make any sense. And, um, but it did not came as a, as a, as a surprise because the, we already studied the total time people spend moving in a, in a day, and this has a clear exponential uh, tail. So if you have a total time of travel in a day that is exponential, you cannot have a long tail inside that gets, that, that gets way beyond. So time is limited. Time is our cost of travel. And uh, it's something that we try to spend uh, with the parsimony. Uh, nevertheless, if I study the, the pattern of uh, the, the, um, the displacement, so the, the, the uh, distance of the trip inside all Italy, this is 500 kilometers, I can make a very nice fit with the truncated power load that everybody else do. And uh, of course, uh, there is a, I, I always use the elephants, so I couldn't uh, uh, avoid this. If you have three parameters, you, you can fit whatever curve that is monotonically decreasing. So this is not something that gives me uh, any clue that uh, the other are right or wrong. In, in, especially because there are no there are clear understanding of what the three parameters are. It's just a fit that has been like, uh, copied from one paper to another. And uh, also the parameters that have been uh, used like for different data set, the exponent uh, changes from 0 0.5 to Four, and uh, the, the, the cutoff can be from two kilometers to 400. So like, uh, this is something that is a bit out of control of, uh, of our community so far. And uh, so I tried to understand what was happening. And this is another question I'm sure everybody uh, knows the answer. If we are studying displacement and we know times, we have to study speeds. And also speeds nobody care of. For some reason, we have uh, physicists entered in the, in the game uh, uh, in the last 10 years, and uh, we didn't use uh, more, uh, the, we didn't try to model speeds. We tried to, to, to model only the displacements. Recently, like, uh, we, we start seeing, like, there is a, a, the first uh, plot like this I saw in a PhD thesis of uh, one colleague of mine in Italy. And so basically, the, the farther you go, the faster you are. This is a paper on plus, it is a very cool title, and they've been mentioned by the, um, the guys who uh, make the Ig Nobel Prize. So the, the Ig Nobel Prize, the, you can find this, this image. Uh, it's pretty trivial, but if you go far away, you will take an airplane and you will go faster. And so it, this is the thing uh, I will try to model. And uh, how? The first thing was uh, using a model that my PC advisor already developed, of course. That is uh, uh, so this, this is very simple. Is you assume that the, the, the velocity and is a random, uh, random noise that in, you integrate over time. This gives you um, an average velocity that grows at uh, the square root of time and gives you a distribution of speeds at the same time that is uh, Gaussian. You integrate it, uh, you've made a, you, um, you can integrate it together with exponential distribution of time. You do a sensible point approximation and you get this beautiful curve that I don't really know how to call. Is it a stretch exponential? I call it stretch exponential, but uh, <laughs> it's not a factor. <laughs> okay, it's kind of a stretch exponential, and uh, there's only one parameter, 
And with this curve, I could um, I have a mechanism that explains with only one parameter the um, the care data that I have. This would be extremely cool if it wasn't false. <laughs> <laughs> The problem is that uh, I also can predict um, how speed grow, and the speed in reality doesn't speed, doesn't grow as a square root at all. They grow linearly. They grow linearly starting from a, a, a value for a very short time. This is about 18 kilometers per hour. So uh, these are all, uh, are only cars, of course. But this is also confirmed if I take uh, public transport. I have under control the public transport of Great Britain. Uh, I have all the data, and I can uh, see how long will you take for getting there uh, with 10 timetables? And if you assume this, that is basically the fact that you, if you go those short uh, trips, you don't really have to lose time in connections. The, um, the growth is pretty much linear for a long, uh, for a long uh, interval between uh, half an hour and four or something. So I see this linear growth for cars, and I see this linear growth for public transport, to independent data sources. And so I have to try to, to, to explain what is the, um, uh, the mechanism behind this acceleration, this linear acceleration, not something that is like a, um, a square root. And uh, so I have to try to think what is the system I'm studying. And the system I'm studying is uh, transportation. Transportation is known to be hierarchical. So if I want to, in London, to go from one place to another, yeah, I can use the bus. Uh, you can use the metro that is, uh, that is faster, or you can use the, the light rail that is even faster. Same is for the roads. Uh, for some reason, this graph that I see from uh, Wikipedia is uh, from right to left to left. Read. So you're, uh, from your house, you will start using the local streets, and then you can uh, eventually rise in hierarchy until you find a freeway that will get you from one side to the other of the state. So uh, you have um, a hierarchy of streets, and uh, you can use it, but the longer is the trip, the more you will use it. And here I use the information about the, the trajectory and know that uh, people pass through certain places and I can interpret it there. I can calculate the average speed of uh, the trips uh, of all the cars that pass through a street, and I can take the 85th percentile, that is the functional definition of, this, of the, um, the speed limit. In the US, for, uh, for getting what is the good speed limit for a street, they took an, uh, 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 an interval of time, they see how the cars go, and they put the 85%. And uh, so the, I call this free speed, and the, so this is the, the, speed, the speed limit of the street where you, people go, grows in the first half of the street, and then goes down. So before you go high in hierarchy, you find your fast speed, and then you go down until you go back to the base uh, sp uh, speed limit of, I don't know, 30 in the, high in the city. And uh, so I take all these characteristics and I put it together in something that is simple enough that I can calculate. That is uh, taking uh, that I have a base speed that is uh, V0 that I calculate uh, before as the interpolation of the curve uh, for T0. And I assume that you have uh, uh, jumps in speed. So you have a jump with an interval that is the delta v, and they have a, a, unif a uniform probability p of jumping from one level to the other, and they have to jump only top, uh, plus one and minus one. It's a kick model. And uh, I also assume that at half of the, um, of the trip, all jumps will start go in the other direction, and they will go down until they go to zero. So the interesting point basically is only solving the first half, and you can assume the other half is uh, symmetrical. And it's a Poisson process, so I know that the average number of uh, jumps will be proportional to the time. I know that the speed will be proportional to the number of, uh, of jumps, linearly. This, the, so speeds are linear with the number of jumps. Number of jumps is linear with time. I, also, uh, I, I want to compute not the top speed at the middle, but the average. The, and so I can approximate this shape to basically, I have approximate the zikurat to the pyramid. Uh, that is this. So I, I, I can I compute the area of this shade and I compute the, the average of this value. And uh, so, of course, uh, this, uh, see everything is linear. The, the average speed grows linearly with time in this model and depends on uh, three parameters V0, delta V, and P. I take V0 from the other fit and uh, I try to uh, um, extrapolate the other two parameters of the Poisson process from the speed distribution because I can calculate the speed distribution of this thing. The Poisson uh, process has, has a Poisson distribution as the number of jumps. 
A jump gives uh, a jump represents the difference in speed. I have uh, the base layer, the, the speed that you, you reach, and they're divided by the gaps, and this is the number of jumps. The average uh, of, the, uh, of the Poisson distribution is nothing but uh, the probability of, the, of having the transition per, uh, multiplied by the time of the half, t, t half. And I use a continuous approximation for the gamma, that is, uh, for, for the factorial, that is the gamma, for having a continuous curve and not a discrete curve. I take this curve, that is uh, relatively easy, if you know that there is a Poisson uh, uh, curve. And there are a lot of primes, mostly because uh, I, uh, I have a lot of halves because of the triangular shape. And uh, this fits very good. The probability distribution, but it's not the probability distribution of one particular speed. I'm taking the surface of the speed at every time. I have a distribution of v at, five, at time 5, 1 at time 10, at time, at time 15, at time 20. I, here I, I cut only 6 slices of this, and I'm fitting the whole curve, curve uh, the whole surface, with two parameters. And it's pretty good. I have uh, some deviations here, and some deviations here. Here I can understand it, because in two hours, uh, uh, in my model, doesn't have a ceiling. I don't have a saturation of speed. I can go as fast as, as I want. And uh, you can know, you know that in Italy you cannot go faster than at a certain speeds. And I also study the limited number of, uh, of layers. But basically, you know that you have a linear trend for a, a, a quantity that is like two times the probability of jumping with four layers. And four layers is more or less what I will probably have in my system. So I have four parameters, average travel time, the base speed, the frequency of the kicks of the Poisson process, and the, the gap between the speeds. And uh, I find that the gap between the speeds, that this is also, also, again, the half, this represents exactly the gap between the speed, is similar to the gaps between the speed limits in Italy. So you have plus 40, plus 40. And here I have uh, fixed 18, so more or less 30. So it's not something that doesn't make any sense. It's not uh, uh, 4,000 kilometers per hour and the probability that is uh, one millisecond. It's something that makes sense for a human being. And uh, I can, of course, compute the displacement distribution. Uh, uh, this I can compute numerically, or I can uh, make the other point approximation for the longer distances. And in this case, gamma depends on the parameter I have. So it's not something that uh, I can really use. And uh, this distribution is nothing but like a superposition of, of uh, Poisson distributions with uh, a, a weight that is decreasing as, an, as the exponential because it's the exponential of the travel time. So it's, uh, again, if you want a superposition of exponential like uh, you see for the mass or for the, the affine. And it's again a Poisson process like the so for the communication. And uh, this can allow me, again, to to predict the same curve. This is a prediction because I'm not uh, making the four parameter move <laughs> to get the, uh, the, the, the best fit. I use the parameters I find in other curves and I, I put it in the distribution and I superpose. And so here I have a mechanism that is consistent with many measures that can explain this curve in a way that is not really easy to fit. But uh, at least I understand what's happening. And what I've learned doing all this. First, I have multiple uh, ways of, of, uh, of uh, um, superposing one curve to the data. Uh, I dare you to decide about, uh, uh, with your eyes between one of the three. And uh, the thing is, this is a fit, this is a fit, this is a prediction. This has one parameter, this has three parameters, this has four parameters. But this is consistent with a lot of uh, other stuff, at least. And uh, in particular, what, uh, what one has to do to arrive to this kind of result is to identify what is the co fundamental constituents of the problem you're studying. And in this case, it was that I found like an universal law on the travel, on the travel time distribution. I know that there is a hierarchy in the transportation system. And I try to use the simplest possible uh, statistical process I could think of. And then I verify what I, what, I, what, I, what I assume, not only on the single pattern that I originally had, but I try to verify on different measures they can have on the data uh, at hand. So I, uh, I, ver I verify on how the speed grow, the distribution of the condition of the uh, speed distribution, and then at the end, I try to see if the pattern is consistent. So I make different measures on what I'm doing. 
And that makes me think, as a mere result, that uh, what the, we uh, thought that the human do levy flight is not true. It's not true simply because if you see times, distribution is short. A distribution that is then is limit, uh, the, the, if the distribution is short and the, the speed limit is fixed, I, can, I cannot have something that is longer than this because we have a fixed system speed limit. And then uh, the distribution I find has have defined moments. So I don't have to discuss about um, super diffusivity or, or something. Like this is a distribution that we can kind of control. And this uh, analysis can uh, let us try to understand something deeper on the human mobility because uh, I actually found differences at urban level, of course. I had only resulted as I was aggregating the whole Italy all together and packing everything in a curve. But every single city has a different travel time, different uh, way the curve grow in, uh, in time, and different uh, distribution of displacement that luckily I can, can predict very well for the individual city. So there is still work to do, and of course there is also uh, some work to do because uh, I only study cars. And if you take the conditional distribution of speeds for the public transport, you find something that is completely different. You say this goes to the same um, uh, stretch exponential because this is the Gaussian you can could have eventually with a random acceleration. This goes to the same stretch exponential, but at the same time, uh, this has completely different statistics. So we can uh, studying the public public transport will be different than studying private transport. And that's it. This is the paper. It's on the archive since forever. It changed three, two times, and they have a third time, third completely rewriting ready because the um, um, reviewers were really, really, really not okay on how I wrote the paper. But uh, it's under review, so I am uh, optimistic. Thank you a lot. Ah, the, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like the, there is Italy. What? Italy is missing in my model. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I, like, you, you like visually, you think you would hammer a little bit down the curve in the middle, <laughs> and um, what would be the he, 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 end of this change? It would be. He, he, he it would be because uh, uh, what what happens is that you have an inhomogeneous uh, offering of the travel of, of the transportation system. You have uh, distances where it is easier to find a way of getting faster, and then uh, for a long time you will have to stick with this uh, with, uh, with this uh, with this layer if you want. So there is, and this is homogeneous everywhere. Like if you go to the north, probably you have a, a easier access to uh, accessibility. It's called the quantity theory. You have an easier accessibility to the fast transportation. While you, if you go uh, to the south, you would be stuck. To the, um, to the low level uh, more. I don't, uh, we can perhaps see if the, this error is consistent, this hammering down. The hammering down is pretty mis much consistent uh, yes, uh, for exactly. all the other cities. It's so it's, uh, so it's, it's, there is always this. Uh, that you have. So maybe there is some sort of physical reason for that. Yeah, the, uh, this, by the way, this is the scale of a city. 10 kilometers is the scale of a city. And this is the scale uh, of uh, uh, the normal interurban inter inter distance. Like you would do 100 kilometers easily in your life. This is something like vacation trip. So uh, also, uh, my data uh, can have tracks so people that like uh, have a different, mm -hmm. slightly different behavior. I mean, I got, I'm a, this is aggregating everything, and is uh, <coughs> there's already a chance that everything worked uh, worked out. But probably also like. Uh, to understand the for a city and then overlapping the problem for the different cities because uh, one city can have like a, big, uh, a great accessibility so uh, you can have a curve that is upper that this is upper than uh, than this one for instance Palermo yeah. is a, is a, is a, is a worse than three and that is not surprise no <laughs> okay. so uh, but uh, there are a lot of differences at the city level. And there is also within the same city, there are like uh, 
uh, distributions of population that can have that are uneven, that can have a different accessibility within the city. So there are a lot. You, this I would believe that if you start trying the, to do this analysis, separating speech and see what is the parameter here and here and here, perhaps you see something that has a meaning. But and then you can add this distribution and have like a field of uh, p, a field of delta of delta v, and uh, uh, try to describe the. the whole problem altogether. So this is what is missing. What is missing is the structural space. Because this is a one one dimensional would, would it be is how how easy would it be to add this missing piece of information in your model? Uh, not hard at the end because I, I can I, I can yeah, now I separate it by city. I can separate by something that is smaller and try to do to to do it like is a Analyzing, analyzing separately the different cities or the city, different areas, and then recreate the upper superposition of this curve. This is lower. It's just time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your model is independent of the topology of the communication. Yeah, it's independent. Completely independent. independent. So it means that you talk to the city to the city council. Don't worry on how you put your streets. Don't worry on how what you do with your roads. No matter what. It's going to follow this distribution of times, so you do it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. It's going to take the same time to, for, our, for the people, we just... Is that, is that the case? Or well, governance, <laughs> governance is hell. So where, where, where I think is, where, what would change on this if one takes into account topology, and in what sense different topologies could improve for? I, I, I will simplify the question because the, the, the simplest question is already a problem. <laughs> uh, um, there is a discussion about uh, how um, uh, putting a new street that makes you travel faster uh, changes your habits. Mm -hmm. Basically, there are two uh, views. Is the first is you have a fixed time that you will spend. So if I make you a street for getting here faster, then you will take your car and make another trip that before you wouldn't do. And me, as, a go, as, a, as the major of uh, Palma, I don't want it. Because you will pollute more with the new street. And another view is uh, uh, travel time savings. Mm -hmm. This is the quantity that I save if I put a street. Is uh, um, something that is not totally respent as, uh, as a new trip. And this, in transportation engineering, is uh, already a discussion. There are two voices if uh, they don't agree of what happens to a single individual if has Spend, if he's spending in a day less. Yeah. Because they thought, uh, they thought uh, what you will do with the time you save. Well, this is the question. Well, well, you don't win anything, because if you assume that you have a city in the north of Italy, which is supposed to be very efficient. Mm -hmm. I rather want, just by the way, in the south of Italy, <laughs> which is supposed to be very inefficient in transportation. You know, that's the difference. Yeah, the, 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 thing, the, the measure would be like uh, probably closer to the accessibility of to the high layers. Like I can, if I, I don't have them, I don't, didn't have here uh, in the paper, the value of P for different cities. That would basically mean how often, if you are in Palermo, are, you can make the jump. How often, if you are in Milano, can make the jump. And then this like, uh, could be an indicator of saying, look, if you do like this new ring road, you will should see a difference in P. And if you don't see the difference between P, probably my model is wrong. <laughs> this is a... You, you see that quite systematic dip below the red curve. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, obviously. Yeah, so maybe I didn't get the, about the point, but is it uh, related to the earlier slide that you showed with the short science paper? that was showing that the earlier with the double with the half thing. What they would do with the half? No, I mean you showed a, a science paper where ah, it's very really short which uses I mean, Ah the double exponential. Uh, could, yeah double could be. Double exponential. Double exponential. Actually, yes. That makes sense. This, voila. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Said, doesn't, the, the data, your data mm. looks a little yeah. bit like those points there, whereas your red curve 
looks a little bit like the red curve there. Yeah, <laughs> that would, be, uh, that would uh, mean that you have like a sort of, uh, because this is a proposition of, uh, of two exponential. There would be have two exponential that are more, so two speeds that are more picked. So yeah. if you say yeah. there are two exponentials in the real data, maybe mm. you can take a look at your model. Mm. Yeah, this, no, this, uh, this, this uh, to have double exponential model, uh, all, all, all I said about animals is very controversial. And has to be taken off of, of my paper because they didn't agree. But they can do that with no, like, no. your data. But, yeah, yeah I, I, I see. Like, this, this but is you have four cities and they all show the same thing. Yeah, yeah and uh, also the aggregated thing is show the same thing. So like, uh, it's uh, like saying that there are, like, because here basically they will say they have, you have two speeds. And so uh, there are something like uh, one layer, could be that one layer is uh, uh, like has a different probability. Like I am I, I, I mostly stuck to the base layer, then the middle layers, uh, so I, stay, I stay for so shorter time. Yeah, something like that. Try, try to, to yeah, detect. that is a good idea. Basically, that would, that would mean that I either stuck a lot of time, I either stuck a lot of time in the urban um, suites, or I take the freeway, and the other two layers are just uh, not that important. Mm -hmm. that, would be, that would make sense for Italy, for sure. Mm -hmm. You have shown, a, you have presented a model on, for velocity, and then you, you compute some uh, displacement distribution. I miss how do you connect them. But I don't know what is the two-dimensionality of the, the thing. Ah, the two-dimensionality is just not existing. <laughs> so, is it, so, is it the formula? Uh, so how do you pass from a velocity? How do you take the interval? I, I, I have distribution of, of times. I have distribution of velocity, and I made uh, I, I made the, the integral with that. But then this doesn't that all the cars go in the same direction. Exactly. But basically, I don't. I, I ignore completely the angle they do in the displacement, and I know that they will travel for some time, and they will travel with a, a given average speed. But the, when, you, when you extract the velocity distribution from data, exactly. then actually in, in, in an imperfect square uh, I city... I'm uh, sorry, I didn't say I am extracting the, dis the uh, Euclidean speeds and the Euclidean distances. I'm not studying this distance, I'm studying only the jump so and the Euclidean speed. But when you measure the... Okay, so you, you are integrating over several... Probably you are making averages over a sufficiently long time so as to consider the, the trajectories of the cars straight instead of being. The reality, the rea reality, I, I, I reality that, that this is not true. Rea the, the, the reality is that the trajectories are, uh, there is like a factor uh, in a city 0 0.7 between uh, one and the other, more or less. Like this is but uh, the, uh, I didn't study because the other data I'm comparing with are all about jumps because the, the mm -hmm. oh, any, for animals they have the trajectories internal, mm -hmm. but for human human behavior they only have where they where you call, and then we, we assume that where you call is where you stay. There is already an assumption, so it's like they have points in the trajectory, and they try to make the, uh, the distribution of jumps, and they try to be closer to that view, and uh, I I agree that since I have the data I should be. I am also studying what is happening inside the reaction. Mm -hmm. Some other questions? No, I have a final question, mm -hmm. a short one. In addition to the, the fact that you explained us that uh, the other results dealing with parallels lacked mm -hmm. uh, a convincing mechanis mechanistical uh, mechanical explanation, uh, many papers published, published on this subject are using the fact uh, uh, mobile phone data and new sources of data and you, you impose to to the model problem the sampling problem in the data. Uh, so basically what do you have to say about that? I mean most of the papers of the results published in the recent year, you think they are just wrong or I mean uh, we have uh, uh, me, Mark and a couple of authors. Uh, we have a paper that is kind of ready, like uh, stuck in my computer. So it's my fault. Uh, on this problem basically uh, when you have a, a, real, a real trajectory and you have phone calls every now and then, this might or not map correctly where people stayed still. This is the question that we have in this paper. And uh, 
the result uh, will be coming and depends it depends on the kind of sampling you do. So uh, uh, and what, what what I'm sure that uh, like personally we don't agree between others that then if you of course if you use uh, aggregated measures like uh, uh, I know that you work here because I can see where you call normally and I can know where you live you can uh, in, uh, understand something about the human behavior on aggregated measure of repetitions of the same thing but on the single trajectory it's a delicate subject. So many centuries ago.